Hello and welcome to the Mindset and Self Mastery Show. I'm your host, Nick McGowan, and on this show, my guest and I unpack the stories that shape us and the lives we lead on our path to self mastery. Now, this is the very first episode of the show, and I am so excited you're here with us. Today on the show, we have Tom Ward. Tom is a medical device salesman who watched his grandfather almost die in front of him as a child because of a heart attack. And 20 years later, he's now selling similar services and devices that saved his grandfather's life. So we discuss how that moment as a child led to the work he does today and much, much more. So let's not wait any longer. Let the games begin. Hello and welcome to the Mindset and Self Mastery Show. This is the very first episode of this show. And I am so friggin' excited to be able to have Tom Ward on the show with me. First off, because we've talked about a podcast for years at this point. I think at one point you were literally texting me like uh, just the word podcast. Like I think that's all, all I was getting from you. Um, but man, I'm so excited. This is episode number one. Um, episode number one. Hello and welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can't believe it. I mean, you know, even then the other day when we were going back and forth about doing episode one, we were like, let's let's do it in a couple of weeks and this and that. And and I think that's exactly how it happened last time. So we were like, you know what? Screw all that. We're doing it tomorrow at four o'clock. <laughs> and now we're giving you a peek behind the curtain. Uh, you know, it's funny that we've talked about doing this for a long time, but timing is uh, is important in all things. So something that we're going to get into with Tom here today is about sales, psychology of sales. Uh, it's easy for he and I to talk about sales because it's what we've done for years and years and years, but the mindset around that and finding balance in a sales career, especially in the medical device career. So to give you a little bit of background on who Tom is, Tom's had an entrepreneurial spirit. As long as he can remember, he says, uh, I know that Tom was really pushing a paint business or a painting business in college besides just drinking and girls at that point. Um, and I know he grew up in an entrepreneurial household. So he's seen the, um, the ebbs and flows of entrepreneur life, the ups and downs, the feast and famine, all of that sort of stuff. For the most part, I think he's lived a pretty good life uh, because of the entrepreneurial spirit that ran through that house. And uh, that led him into sales. So uh, getting from college into, uh, into sales, I think he went through paychecks and financial industry. Now he's in medical device sales. So you may have noticed the, uh, the name of this podcast has the pursuit of happiness in it because I figured, you know, medical device sales, why not, right? <laughs> um, so really appreciate you being here, Tom. Uh, as we record this episode, we're only a few days away from Christmas. So I have to ask, are you done your Christmas shopping? Do you feel like it's actually Christmas? You know what? I'm 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 in such a transition right now. I'm I'm literally moving to Austin, Texas next week. So the idea of Christmas this year is, you know, I, I don't even know. I'm in this weird in-between phase. But yeah, a lot of my shopping luckily is done. I'm the quintessential wait till like the morning of Christmas Eve to go to the ball and do some shopping. Um, but I don't have any excuse because I'm literally living, you know, two minutes away from the King of Prussia Mall here. So uh, yeah, a lot of it's done, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm trying to get in the Christmas spirit as much as possible. And I think we could kind of unpack that you still go to a mall. There's a demo <laughs> of people that go to malls, and then there's uh, demos of people that just thank Jeff for sending them things every couple of days. Thank you, Mr. Bezos. Um, yeah, I, I've shown you the mic that I'm using. You're like, where did you get that? Did you go to a store and buy that? It's like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, I prefer to go to the local shops if I can for certain things. But for the most part, if I can get something delivered to my door in two days or less, I'm pretty much going to do that. Well, again, Tom, I appreciate you being on the show. This is episode number one, and I'm so excited that you're here with me. And I'm excited for us to be able to get into everything we're going to get into. I know a lot of it's going to be around sales and psychology of sales and mindset and balancing life within all of this. And we're going to bounce from a, a handful of different topics. But with this first episode, what I really wanted to get into was some of those experiences that have made you. you know, this, this is really about taking the stories that we've been through and sharing those with people that may not know you, may not know your stories, may not know what some of those things are about. Mm -hmm. So we all go through trials, right? We all go through stuff. 
And there are things that, you know, in your 20s or 30s, you can look back at and go, oh my gosh, I remember going through this thing. I'm sure when you're in your 40s and 50s, et cetera, you can do the same thing. And you would hope that over the course of time, you get a little smarter, get a little less dumb, do a little less dumb shit and be able to get into a little less trouble because you've figured some things out, right? You know, you're kind of moving through life. So those stories that have shaped us, I want to unpack a couple of those experiences that have set your life up, but let's set you up. Who are you? Can you kind of tell us a little bit about you, uh, what you're what you're doing now for a living, and maybe start off with something that's a little weird or strange that people don't know about. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now, I mean, I'm, I, you know, ever since I graduated college, I've been in sales and I've been in the business world, but, you know, for the past five years, I've been in the medical device sales world, um, which is just completely different than any other sales position I've ever had. And it's a really rewarding career. It's really fulfilling for so many different reasons. But, you know, you touched on childhood and, uh, you know, growing up in an entrepreneurial household. And, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to basically, um, you know, watch my dad grow a small business, you know, and he was a plumber, started out as a plumber and basically expanded into, uh, you know, um, a full on construction company. So, really, I think that experience, seeing that. Hey, in America, you can you have the opportunity, regardless of education, your upbringing, whatever it is, you have the opportunity, no matter what. There's literally no excuses. You can go out and create a business from nothing and succeed and make a good living for yourself. So I, I saw that. I saw the people that he worked with, and I thought to myself, man, I, I really want to do that. I want to be in business. And, you know, through some, some trials and tribulations and growing up and stuff like that and working for him over the years, I realized the construction world wasn't necessarily my cup of tea. But, you know, interestingly enough, in college, I did have a chance to, you know, start a small, you know, basically contracting business myself. Did that. And a lot of it was door to door sales. You know what I mean? It was just knocking on canvassing neighborhoods. I go into Swarthmore, PA, real hoity toity area. You know, yeah. Swarthmore. <laughs> you could have picked worse places to go. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, just kind of targeted those like kind of richer areas and just went out door knocking. Got a lot of no's, got a lot of doors slammed in my face. But, um, and I can remember some days where I just wanted to kind of give up. You know what I mean? Like, what the hell am I doing in here? It's raining. You got people freaking screaming at me. Um, but ultimately it just kept c- kind of trucking away and, um, it had a lot of success with that, you know, was nationally ranked in, you know, in that, uh, in that organization and, um, went on, you know, and had a pretty successful sales career. Now I'm in the medical device world and I love it. And like I said, for so many different reasons, it's, it's a lot different than your typical sales position, but, um, always learning, man, always learning something new. That's for sure. I can imagine. But the healthcare industry right now is absolutely insane. So, but I want, I want to get to that in a minute. But yeah. let's take a step back. You, you grew up in an entrepreneurial house. You've gone through some different things. As you got into college, you said, hey, I'm going to pick this higher end area and I'm going to go sell them contracting services because that's basically what my pops was doing as I grew up. Yeah. And you figured out that that wasn't exactly what you wanted to do. But what about all of that? Like, think back to being a little kid because I think. That little kid that's inside of you is kind of the holder of your mindset at times. So to think back to that little kid, when you're looking at your dad and you're thinking, I want to do that, really, what was it about it? Was it the admiration or was it like, I, I want to be able to have some sort of freedom or something like that? Because that ties into where you're at today. You know what I mean? Right. No, it's a great question. I think it is that. I think it was the sense of freedom of, of kind of calling your own shots, um, you know, the freedom to control your own schedule, you know, and not be beholden to, you know, reporting to an office each day. Um, and the ability to kind of control your own paycheck too. And, and just, you know, with, with, you know, you know, a better financial situation comes, you know, the freedom to choose, whatever you want, where you want to send your kids to school, you know, where you want to eat, you know, what kind of car you want to drive, kind of house you want to live in, all those different things, really just, you know, choosing your own lifestyle, you know, I Mm -hmm. think that's kind of what it boiled down to. So that was really the admiration behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So when you think back to uh, the things that have made you you right now, let's tap into the mindset side of it. So growing up, what did you see that makes you you now that has helped you mentally? Or maybe hasn't, you know, maybe it's kind of screwed you up a little bit. You're like, uh, <laughs> you know, these are things that I work on, you know, right? Because because of those things, you have to go work on those and you're able to do those because there was something screwed up that happened. But, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I can, I can pinpoint a couple childhood experiences. I mean, number one, you know, the entrepreneurial side of things. Number two was, you know, and I'll try to come back full circle and kind of hit on that question. But I remember spending all my summers when I was a little kid with my grandpa, who you had the opportunity to meet. Yeah. Yas, right? Yeah. Oh man. What a guy. Yeah. Great guy, total, just the epitome of, of a gentleman. And, uh, you know, he came from Italy to, to the U.S. at a young age, forged a successful career in the culinary world, became a chef at the Union League. And I had, a, I had the luxury of spending a lot of my summers at his house. And it was a small row home in Upper Darby. And we'd hang out all the time. He cooked me great meals and all that. And I remember one day, it was a hot summer day, ice cream guy rolls up. And I'm like, Pop, I want to go get some ice cream. The ice cream guy's out front. And uh, he's like, all right, Tommy, let's go. You know, we go outside and some kids had kind of formed a line. A couple of the, the, you know, some of the adults in the neighborhood were there too. And I remember, I remember he, he started having chest pains, grabbed his chest and basically fell to the ground. He had a heart attack right in front of my eyes. And uh, ambulance came and, um, you know, he was in and out of the hospital, had, had surgery. and. It was his defibrillator that saved his life. You know, he had a pacemaker, uh, an implant. And I thought to myself, oh my God, that's, that's a traumatic experience that I, I remember so much, so crystal clear. I remember it better than I think anything that probably happened to me today. And um, I specifically remember, you know, my family visiting them in the hospital and in, you know, in the operating room, post recovery and all that stuff. And them talking about the medical device rep that was involved in wow. his procedure. And uh, you can't help but think, you know, connecting the dots, looking back, you know, did that event lead me to what I'm doing today? You know what I mean? Did it lead me to being in medical device sales? You know what I mean? So that was kind of one of the interesting things from childhood that I, that I can remember, you know, that um, probably the very first traumatic experience that I can remember, you know, so it's interesting to kind of connect the dots on that. Wow. And story to that. I'm so glad, first off, that Piaz didn't pass right then and there, because this yep. may be a different story. You know, it, it was traumatic, it sounds but it also sounds like it was traumatic enough, you know, to be able to guide you in a direction. Uh, I hear different people at different times say that something like that similar tragic thing happened and that got them into a certain path. Uh, not many people can tie back to something specific that happened in their life that set them on a trajectory. So can you unpack that a bit of, about like really what the importance is behind that? Because look, you're selling medical devices at this point. Um, and you're you're saving lives at those people. Yeah, I mean it's it, it is an interesting um, thing to think about. You know, it wasn't something that I would say that I grabbed out of thin air and thought hmm, this is a directly you know correlating event to what I'm doing now. I actually I actually discovered that candidly in a therapy session. Beautiful. And um, you know, interestingly enough. You know, a couple of years ago, I was experiencing severe panic attacks. It was a time in my life where I just, I just had too much on my plate. You talk about balance, um, way out of balance. You know what I mean? At this particular point in life, I was renovating a house. You know, I was in a, in a, in, in a you know, long-term relationship. Um, you know, I, I had a new job promotion um, with a giant quota. Um, and all these different things going on at the same time, it, it, it literally led to panic attacks. And interestingly enough, chest pain. So, um, yeah, I mean, by doing the, the kind of the talk therapy sessions, I had an incredible psychiatrist that, you know, talked through this and helped mm -hmm. me. Unpack it. I, there's no way I'd be able to do that on my own. 
Sure. And literally by doing that kind of talk therapy back and forth, my symptoms pretty much disappear. And it's, it's interesting that they were cardiac related, you know, it, mm-hmm. it was to the point where I couldn't go out on a, on a jog without feeling like I was having a heart attack. So that traumatic experience, again, that got tied into my anxiety in adult life of the heart can be harmful. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, um, you know, so, uh, obviously, you know, worked through that and, um, you know, I'm symptom, symptom free, you know, to this day, but, um, it really, it really, you know, it all is about balance and kind of finding a happy medium where a career is, is going well. And so is the family life, you know, mm-hmm. and, and everything else and hobbies and all the things we do to kind of stay sane. Yeah. I think it all ties in together, uh, that balance with whatever you're doing. So when you think of your heart having some triggered problems, it was because there was a mental trigger that was happening. So, you know, I, I talk to people all the time about the, the mindset that we have to be aware of is awareness about your mindset to be able to actually see that there's a problem first and be able to understand that. So you were probably in a spot where you're running and you're like, man, this, is, this isn't as hard of cardio as my heart's telling me it is. Exactly. What's that problem? And being able to dive deep into that, what actually led you to, uh, to therapy where most people maybe... Most will kind of go more of the medical route and they'll just try to pump drugs into their system to fix the, the heart problem. Healthy, you know, I'm healthy, you know, in my 20s at the time. Um, there's no way of heart problems, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and I, had to, I had to unpack that. And, um, you know, it was not just that, it was panic attacks, it was all different kinds of things like that. So I, I knew you know, this absolutely has to be like, you know, mental health related, you know what I mean? It's gotta be anxiety. So yeah, it, you know, I think a lot of people don't, um, you know, they, because of the stigma and for all different kinds of reasons, they won't go, go get help. You know what I mean? I don't want to be known as that. I don't want to be labeled crazy, Hmm. you know? Um, it's a big problem still, even in this day, even in 2021, soon to be 2022, people don't want to do that. They don't, they're there. Maybe it's their ego. They don't want to go talk to somebody. And I got to be honest with you, man, it was the best thing that I ever did for myself because I learned so much about myself. You know what I mean? I would never would, would have tied those things together if I didn't go talk to, you know, a professional. Oh yeah. Now look, audience, we're not pushing therapy or anything of the sort, pushing conversation. We're really pushing communication. And there's only so much you can do in your head. Think about how often you have that conversation in your head. And then you let yourself down the next time that thing comes up that you said you were going to do. We do it all too often. You know, we try to hold ourselves accountable, but you really can't. And sometimes you just need to force yourself to get into four square walls and say, I'm going to talk to this person about these things and it's going to be painful and please lock the door so I don't try to run out. Uh, I've actually said that to a therapist before, like, all right, we're gonna have a conversation, but you better lock that door and put the, the chair in front of it. And, you know, partially kidding, but at the same time, your brain's going to start to try to run away. So it's easy for you to run away in those situations. So Tom, you were having a lot of problems and you came to an awareness that there was potentially a problem that wasn't, um, uh, mechanical, let's say it was more of a mental thing. Yeah. So let's break down a little bit for the audience, how you actually went through that process of then being able to talk to somebody, because I think you nailed it. I think a lot of people have a hard time of being able to talk to somebody because they're not sure when they're ready to do it. You know, like, well, maybe I just need to give myself a little bit more time or I I need to do this or I need to do that. So can you walk us through a little bit of what that process looked like for you to get there? First of all, I think there's a huge problem there. I think there's a lack of of good therapists out there. Like, even if you try to, you know, reach out to some of them, like you can't get in and see some of the, some of the good ones anyway for months. Oh man. Yeah, I know. I tried to get, uh, get one a couple of years back and they literally told me six months for one. And when I asked them what they said, yeah, other people have been waiting for a year. Yeah. So that's a problem. That's a huge Jeez. problem. And, um, you know, I thought a lot about that subject and like, thank God that, te- you know, one of the benefits of COVID was telehealth it became such a big, um, a, you know, a big thing for people, not just for mental health, but for, you know, just going to see the doctor for, you know, whatever, you know, their ankle or whatever, the headaches, migraines. 
So, um, you know, having the telehealth, hopefully that's going to help out a lot just by doing something like this on Zoom. Mm-hmm. You know, why can't that help somebody? Um, but, it, you know, it really just got to the point where, um, you know, you, I almost didn't have a choice where I'm like, oh, man, I, I, I really do need to do this. I really go, you know, do need to uh, to talk to somebody, kind of get a, get another opinion. You know, it's funny, you know, growing up in, the, I think, in the era we grew up in, you never learned about that subject. I can't remember any class I sat in where they talked about mental health whatsoever. No, that wasn't a class. There wasn't no. a class. There should be. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so yeah, that was interesting, interesting thing. Glad I did, you know, glad I went that route. And, you know, from a business standpoint, things are better socially, you know, just personally, things are, things are just so much better for that. So thank God for that. One of the things that I've always appreciated about you is that you're smart, but sometimes you're too smart, like too smart for your own good. And I think we're akin when it comes to that, where we can kind of talk ourselves in and out of stuff. Mm -hmm. But those internal conversations that you had and that process that you got through to be able to get to that point, Mm -hmm. there's there are nuggets that were in there that maybe you haven't actually processed through. And that's totally all right. Most people kind of don't because you're going through it. And then when you're done, you're done. Right. But for those people that are having a hard time of realizing like, hey, I just need to talk to somebody. What was it that you got to where you're like, all right, let me go do this, do this thing. I started to get honest with the people around me. What led you to that? (sighs) You know, why not just hide? Why not continue to hide? Because you don't, you don't have a choice at that point. Do you have a choice at that point? Well, I I don't know. You tell me. I mean, I got to a point in life where my choice was jump off a building or do something about it. Obviously, it didn't jump. Yeah. So I I would hope you didn't get to that point. Um, But no, but I think that point getting to that point, I think it's when it starts to affect like your your career and your Mm -hmm. daily life. That's when it becomes a problem. And that's when I think, you know, it's for me, I'll just say for me that. It got to a point where I definitely needed to kind of reach out, you know, and I started to, I started to be honest with the people around me, friends and coworkers. And I, I was like, it was unbelievable how many people were like, oh yeah, dude, that happened to me too. I talked to so-and-so and, uh, you know, they straightened me out right away. And I'm just like, what, really? You went, you know what I mean? So it was taking that step to be honest. I was blown yeah. away with some of the feedback I got from other people. I'm like, really? You went and did that too, you know? And then I was, what blew me away even more was after I did that and did the therapy thing, how many people reached out to me saying, Hey, I'm going through, you know, I'm having anxiety too. What, what, how did you, how did you get over it? How, how did you get help? How did you fix it? Mm -hmm. You know? So that was cool to be able to kind of help other people too, like after the fact, um, and, uh, you, you know, I would say when things start to like affect your daily life, like you, you got to do something about it, you, yeah. you know, that's, maybe that's just my personality. I'm not going to leave something unfixed and unaddressed, you know? Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you know, different personalities, different character types, think different environments, right? You know, people are in such uh, spaces with people around them or not around them that will kind of brush things off or just, you know, demean them a little bit more. Um, you know, being able to be authentic and honest with yourself and then with the people closest to you and stepping out and trying to fix those problems. That's huge. So let's kind of fast forward a little bit. You went through that rough time and now here you are, you're, <laughs> you're engaged to get married. You're moving. You, you got a new job that's paying you more, better place, better environment. You're in such a better headspace. I've known you for a long ass time and I've seen you go up and down, up and down. And I think you're in the best headspace that you've ever been and that you're confident in what you're doing. What happened from then till now that are kind of those little, you know, things that you take with you on the rest of the journey? What were those main points that you took out of everything that happened for you to get to where you're at now? Basically, what makes you you right now? You know, like I said, I keep talking about that. That, by the way, that's a Steve Jobs quote. You know, you can't connect the dots looking forwards. You can only connect them looking backwards. <laughs> so it's just, you know, it's, you know, I guess from a career standpoint, um, and you know, moving and all these different things. 
you know, I, I just wasn't afraid to kind of take a risk, you know, especially as it relates to getting into medical device sales and moving down to Austin, Texas in like a week. Life is short, man. And it's like the rocking chair theory, you know, when we're 80, 85 and we're sitting in a rocking chair on the front porch and we're thinking about our life, you know, am I going to have any regrets? You know, and, you know, with the move, I'll talk about that. You know, if we didn't decide to do it, you know, my fiance and I, you know, would we have ever done it? Probably not. You know, well, we have done this podcast if we sat there talking about it and analyzing it, you know, every day. Um, you know, it's like a paralysis by analysis kind of thing. And, and, and I think the main point I'm trying to get at is, you know, you just got to go for it and you just got to do it, whether that's that new job that you, you know, that, that might be a little bit of a stretch for you, but you know, you, you, you might, you might not be necessarily thinking that you're ready for it. Just go, just do it. You know? And if you, if you lose, you learn, you know, a lot of that is about your mindset. You know, if, if your mindset wasn't set on the trying to find the thing, the thing to do, the next thing to do, Mm -hmm. that mindset of trying to hunt for the thing that gets you excited, but overall that mindset of just trying and stepping and putting your right foot and then your left foot and your right foot and your left foot. There are a lot of people that kind of get stuck. You know, I've been stuck in life. There have been different moments where I remember just sitting there almost sedentary and had given up and just failed myself. And when you're in that and perpetually down there, you're going to continue to go down there. So if you're looking at the negative, you're going to focus on the negative and you'll get that. So with everything you've done, you've gone through, and now with the move and all that stuff, there's a lot that's going on. So something that you and I've talked about off air and just over the course of time is balance. I think about the level of ag I want to deal with. Like, What's the ag meter? How much ag do I really want to put up with certain things? You know, I've had conversations with people. They're like, well, I do this thing and I make this money. And then I'm really aggravated about everything. I'm like, that's cool. Except all of that sucks because you're not actually living the life that you want to live. So that ag meter, uh, and I don't know if that's like a trademark thing. Maybe it should be. Maybe I'll put that in the back wall. Like, here's the ag meter. <laughs> yeah, you just trademarked it right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so having balance is absolutely key. And as you've grown, as you've gone through things, and as you're about to move, get married, start a new job, be in a brand new area, make new friends, all those things, how, how are you planning on continuing to find balance? And how do you do that now? I don't know if it's possible to find 100% true balance. I will say that. And I'm no no challenge. (laughs) And I'm I'm not, you know, claiming to be some kind of an expert, you know, through my experiences, I've learned some things on the way. And one of the things is the pursuit of balance. Mm -hmm. I think in 100% always pursue it. And that's what I always try to do, you know. I think naturally I'm somebody that gets tunnel vision. And I think when we're talking about men, you know, trying to seek mastery over their mindset, which is the title of your show, basically. Let's move some of those words around, right? But basically, <laughs> that's the title of the show. Um, I think men, you know, are they tend to get laser focused, you know what I mean? Versus women, you know, being in, you know, in a relationship, I mean, you can, you can tell this right away. Women are thinking about 12 different things at the same time. They're the ultimate multitaskers. And that's not me. You know, I'm, I'm a hundred percent. We're doing this podcast today. This is a hundred percent. My focus. I'm a hundred percent focused on this and only this, I'm not thinking about anything else. So naturally, um, you know, I know that about myself. I get tunnel vision. I get super focused on something, whether it's competing in a triathlon and training for that, or, you know, getting some new crazy sales goal and, and going after that at work, you know, um, Knowing that about yourself and managing your, you know, that effectively is probably the best thing that I could do. Just speaking in terms of, you know, what I think and just my opinion. So you get into the masculine and the feminine energy. <clears throat> it's not just about sex, not at all. There are definitely um, women I've met that have been very masculine in their energy, mm-hmm. and men that I've met that have been very feminine in their energy, and some that have have that you know equilibrium of balance. I agree with you that I don't think you can actually get to a hundred percent balance because that's in every single moment in every single nanosecond of being completely balanced. And I don't know if that's really how life should be, 
you know, just like when people say, well, if everybody was like me, it would be great. Really, no, I wouldn't want billions of me in the world at all. If I had the opportunity to be cloned, I don't know if I would, well, yeah, I'd probably want to do that, but you know, <laughs> it's a different story. I'd get a lot of, a lot of stuff done and we'd have some good conversations, some good arguments and stuff like yeah. that. But really that masculine and feminine energy, there is a balance there. So when you talk about the people that have all these things that they're thinking through and that feminine energy, um, that's just a, a portion of that. Just like when we're focused on things as men, we're in that masculine energy and just being specifically focused. But the balance is in between that. How we go about that can be different for everybody. But do you have things that you work through, like uh, meditations, or do you do journaling, or anything of that sort, or do you just stand up every couple hours and just stand outside for a few minutes? Like, what's your jam when it comes to that balance? Man, it's I'm huge on morning routine. I mean, huge Me on morning routine. It's it's I'd be lost without it. <sighs> if I don't do something in my daily routine, like my whole day is thrown off. Can, can you share? Because this might be a breakthrough for a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> some people don't have their mornings down, they'll get up and they'll instantly be nose deep in Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. And then they're just absorbing all this trash for the most part that's coming yeah. in. So give us a, give us a peek behind the curtain. People take yeah. notes on this. What's your morning look like? I mean, if I wake up and I do this and I'm on Instagram, I've already lost. I'm done. I'm toast. Yeah. So, you know, I try to stay away from the phone as much as possible for the first, you know, hour or so in the morning, but it's, I'm huge on working out, man. I'll go, I'll, I'll knock out some cardio. I'll do an hour, hour and a half of cardio. Um, come back, take a shower. I, I literally write in a gratitude journal every morning. I'll write 10 things I'm grateful for that day. And, you know, if, if I miss one of those steps, man, it is just like, oh, the day is not as good as it can be, you know? And with working out, I mean, you just feel more relaxed and appreciative and just in a totally better mindset. And it was funny. You were telling me about that podcast. Um, it was at Lewis Howes, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I listened to a little bit of that on the treadmill earlier. Um, one of his episodes with Andrew uh, Huber. He's like a neuroscientist out of Stanford. Yep. And, you know, he was talking about going out and getting sunlight in the morning, like in that first hour of waking up, like. To eliminate brain fog, which, you know, I know a lot of people experience, especially with daylight savings times, you go out, even if it's not a sunny day, if it's cloudy, go out, get a little bit of um, fresh air and be outside that could have like huge benefits, cognitive benefits for you for, you know, through the rest of the day. So I try to do at a minimum, like those three things. And then, then my meetings and email and everything else kind of comes after that. Hmm. So you prep yourself before you get into the chaos of the day. And are you yep. working out every day? Are you doing something to just get your body moving? Yeah, I have a, um, I have a, a triathlon coach and he's, he makes my entire kind of training plan for me. So I'll wake up and I'll look at it and I'll be like, Oh shit, man, I got to do that today. I got to <laughs> run two miles. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so you do look at your phone, but you look at your phone to see what sort of so yeah, this thing you're going to get into yeah, or whatever the night before or whatever. But, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, you know, he, luckily, you know, he, he, he does all that planning for me. So I don't have to think about that stuff. I'll just get up and do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I got a half marathon coming up in Austin in February. So that's, I'm doing a lot of running heavy kind of stuff, but no, I need at least one rest day a week, sometimes two rest days a week. Sure. I think a big question there is, uh, it sounds like something that you need to do as part of your morning routine is to move your body, to get up and do something. Um, and some people will get up, just instantly go to the gym. Some people won't. Some people go to the gym at night. You know, I, I think we can probably have an entire episode just specifically about the benefits of working out and productivity and just living a better life. Uh, I should probably bring on a neuroscientist or somebody else that and have some of those conversations because I think you and I are like, well, when I get up and do things, I feel better. Like, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but let's get into that journaling a bit. So I, I journal too. I do the, the similar thing. I've got intentions, goals, gratitudes, and then I do a journal in the AM, PM, of like kind of free thinking of how I felt, what happened, all that sort of fun yeah. stuff, then challenges and wins for the day. So I'll do it in the morning and at night. I've got about maybe 15 minutes. Um, 
collectively. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a half hour at most. But what is it when you go through and you write out those 10 gratitudes, what do you feel at that point uh, that has changed you differently than it did years ago when you didn't do that? I think what it does is it, it's like what Tony Robbins calls mental priming. I mean, Tony Robbins is a huge um, routine guy. He yeah, talks about especially in the mornings. Time. Yeah. And he's like, you know, it's like priming the pump. You know what I mean? Like, you know, whatever, you know, pick your analogy there, but, um, sure. you know, pri- getting yourself in just like a, a state of gratitude. Cause ultimately like, you know, that determines your focus through the day. Mm-hmm. If you wake up and you prime yourself, you know, to write 10 things you're grateful for, maybe the whole rest of the day, you know, you're going to look at things in a, in that lens of gratitude versus looking at the bad things and the negative things like you alluded to earlier. Yeah. So you're setting up, you're setting yourself up for a win there. If you wake up and you're focusing on these, these great things in your life. And at the end of the day, like you'll, you'll find, I think that, um, you just, you're, you're going to just naturally attract, um, more of those good things in your life by focusing on them. Yeah. That's key. I, I think really being able to understand your flow in the morning and getting into that routine can be a pain in the ass. Like when, when you think of like, setting up your routine and doing that. Just like everybody, here we are, almost the end of the year. By the time this airs, it's probably going to be the beginning of the year, maybe a weekend, whatever. whatever. There's going to be a lot of people that have already gone to the gym, already signed up, and have already quit. Yeah. Because it was just too difficult to do. But when you think of getting yourself into that structure and doing those things, you're literally, to break it down simple, you're not putting trash in your mind from whatever your phone's going to give you yeah. And you're instantly starting to put your brain to work to do positive work, to start thinking of the things that just start to move your, your energy levels and lower the ag meter, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's so much garbage on social media, man. You know what I mean? I've, I've tossed around the idea of just getting rid of it all together. It's funny. My fiance, is, she's, she's working for uh, Meta. And uh, I said, that's, that's an amazing opportunity, which it really is an incredible opportunity. But I said, you got to watch the social dilemma before, before you sign the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she sat down and watched it. And uh, she goes, no, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. But um, at the end of the day, there still is a lot of positive that comes from social media, which 100% there is. I mean, I think it's yeah. transformed the business world. I mean, particularly yours. I mean, you're... Mm-hmm your past career, you, you relied heavily on social, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. it, was, it was your business. Exactly. Yeah. It was your business. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it's, it's how a lot of people make money. Um, but at the end of the day, a lot of the content floating out there, you know, it, it, you know, a lot of it can really, um, be, you know, garbage, right? So don't look at it in the morning is, is my only role with yeah. that. You yeah, I, I agree. It's, uh, you know, I keep thinking in my head, Guns don't kill people. People kill people. <laughs> the gun just happens to be the one that did it. Yeah. You know, so social media is kind of the same where people are putting trash out. And people yeah. are consuming trash. Yeah. It's also, you know, for the most part, look, we, we all fall into algorithms in some way, but you also create your own. So if you're just seeing straight trash, you've got problems because you're clicking and liking on the wrong things. But even some of the stuff that comes through news-wise or anything like that, again, if we break this down real simply, we're literally taking that mechanic impulse to just grab your phone and instantly start thumbing because you're looking for the dopamine hits. That's what you're looking for. You're looking yeah. for the happiness out of that. Yeah. So if you can get up and get your mind into that in a different way, that can change everything drastically. So my challenge to our listeners is to be able to do that for a couple of days. I run a program every so often that's a seven days of discipline program. At the core of it, it's seven days of discipline. Pretty simple. It's in the name. Really breaking down what you do and getting into the habit of those things. So, Tom, when you were getting into the gratitude journal, Mm -hmm. how did you stick yourself to it? Did you set a timer? Did you tell your girl? Did you lock yourself? Did you put it on your you know, pillow and say like, I have to do this before I go to bed. How did you do it? I can't even remember. Cause I've been doing it for like, God, probably like seven, eight years now, man. All right. So close your eyes. Think back. 
Little Tommy. <laughs> what was Little Tommy doing? <laughs> Man. Um, where did that come know. from? Especially if it was eight years ago. Well, where it came from was, you know, back, we're talking seven, eight years ago, the secret was huge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the secret. Yep. So, so I, was, I was listening to the secret. I was listening to the audio recordings of it. And uh, someone had got on there and was talking about it. I'm like, you know what? Let me try that. That sounds, that sounds pretty cool. And um, started doing it. And I guess I just probably stuck to it for maybe like 10 days in a row. And then it just was habit. It was just a bit cool and never stopped since. You know, I don't plan on stopping it anytime soon. You know, there's 100% days where I I do miss it. Like I I won't do it. I'll forget to do it. Something happens. I'm traveling, whatever the case may be. Um, But, you know, if I forget to do it, I'll like stop what I'm doing, grab the notebook and and do it right then and there, you Mm -hmm. know. So yeah, yeah, it's 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 been it's been really huge for me for sure. There's a lot to that because your mindset right off the bat when we think about waking up in the morning, neither grabbing your phone or just uh, I know there's some people that'll get into an argument with their spouse or they'll instantly have to do something. Um, you're gonna have to do something no matter what. Like think about it. You get up, you have to do something. Most part, you got to get up and pee at least. Like you, you at least need to do that. You've been sleeping for six to eight hours. So getting ourselves into the habit of being able to do something that's beneficial to us is crucial. So if you've got pen, paper, you've got something, I challenge you to be able to just write out a couple of things that you're grateful for the end of this episode or before you go to sleep. Again, something that works for me really well is doing that in the morning and doing it at night. Quick 10, 15 minutes of three things. Now, Tom goes a little ham with it and does 10 things. You can do one thing if you want. Just start off with it. So, Tom, it sounds like one of the big things that you uh, do is your gratitude journal that primes you for the day. And that's one of the big chunks that uh, I don't know if you got that from, you know, you saw your parents doing any of that stuff or reading or anything like that. But that's a big takeaway that I think a lot of people don't really understand. Or maybe they've tried it. Maybe they tried it like they tried the gym at one point and then they quit because it got a little too difficult. So for those people that are going to try that again and want to actually succeed at it, what do you, uh, what do you suggest that they, they do if you know, they miss a day or two or don't feel like doing it? It, it, it totally doesn't have to be gratitude journaling. It's you, you, like you hit, you, hit on, you hit that on the head. It could be anything. It could be meditation, just taking 10 minutes for yourself and thinking happy thoughts or thinking about nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Um, but before your day gets chaotic and you go to work and do all these things, the the, the point of it is, I think just having a little bit of time for yourself, you know what I mean? Like for me doing this, you know, basically forces me to, to have some time by myself, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever the case may be. And I do it with a cup of coffee. Um, so it literally doesn't have to be that at all. It could be taking a walk, it could be reading a book. It could be, it could be, you know, listening to you know, a pod, you know, some kind of positive podcast, whatever the case may be, find something that works for you um, and stick to it. You know, like it's like any habit, what do they say? You do it 15 days in a row, it becomes habit. So just get through that 15 days and um, then it'll just be incorporated into your daily habit. I've always pushed for those 30 days. Like I'm going to do this thing for 30 days. How many times have you said that to yourself too? When you're like, I'm going to do it for this long. And like half hour into it, you're like, yes, I'm done. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because you're well, not fully bought into it. So let me ask you, Nick. I mean, what do you think? You know, for anyone that's, you know, trying to incorporate one of these positive habits, what would you say? Where how would you say that they could stick to it and not be the person that goes to the gym for the first week and then stops going? Well, look, first and foremost, I get it. Totally get it. We've all been through those things where you intend on doing something and then you just Um, you just don't, you just don't. And there's something that didn't click or clicked in a different way in your mind. So I think it's really making sure that you've got it in front of you. There are things that I do where I set myself reminders. Like I'd ask you about reminders earlier. I have some reminders that, uh, you know, or go to bed, (laughs) get ready to go to bed, stretch, meditate, read and journal, pray like those sort of things. And those are good little nods. I don't look at those and instantly, like wherever I'm at, I'm like, I have to go do this thing right now because it just told me to do it. But it's at least least the nod for me to go do it. So I think if you could set yourself up to have to do that thing. So let's say you start with a gratitude journal or you just want to get back to journaling a little bit to be able to prime your brain a bit. 
then grab a pad of paper and a pen and put it where you're going to see it. Most people need to go to the bathroom and typically grab something to drink. They're going to get coffee. So put it in your kitchen, put it on the table, put it right on the sink if you need to in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You know, like you'd said earlier, Tom, there are certain days where you'll miss one or two of the things. You don't really kick yourself in the ass about it. You might be like, ah, oh, man, I should have done this thing. And I've realized that at different points, not meditating and not journaling or not having that time to myself has really screwed up the rest of the day. So that's my own little kick myself in the ass. But you don't go back and like beat yourself up about it. You just move on. Right. But you got to get in that rhythm of that. So I think for those people that want to get into that rhythm, it's a matter of figuring something out that you want to do and then making sure you're aware of it. Awareness is key in all things. Because if you're not aware that there's a problem, then what's the problem? So having some sort of notepad or even your phone just to be able to do your journaling or meditating, uh, I'll give you two quick things that are very easy to do and can take you three minutes at most. So if you have a pad of paper and a pen, write out three things that you're grateful for. You can be like Tom and do 10 things or you can do more, but three minutes, maybe set a timer on your phone of just gratitudes. The second thing would be meditating for three minutes. Now, Tom, you'd mentioned about just quieting the mind. Mm. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of stuff going through my mind at all times. So it's pretty difficult to just quiet the mind. I don't know anybody that can just instantly quiet the mind, but with priming and with meditation and being able to get into that habit and that discipline, you can start to pull back from those things and be able to move thoughts aside and just get back to your breathing. You know, for those of us that meditate, we know that's the easiest way to get back to it. Just concentrate on the breathing and that'll pull you back into awareness. So again, three minutes of journaling or three minutes of meditation. And I use an app called the Insight Timer app. A friend of mine a couple of years ago told me about it. It's got hundreds of thousands of different uh, meditations and music and all this other stuff. And there are certain ones that are two minutes long, three minutes long. There are certain days where I will know that I have a hectic day and maybe I didn't get to bed at the specific time I wanted to. So I didn't get as much sleep. So I know I've really just got a couple minutes to be able to do my meditation in the morning. I use a three-minute one, one that I go back to pretty often. It ends with, now go have a kick-ass day. And I love that. And just kind of move along. Mm -hmm. So getting into that habit and starting it and just continuing to work through it. I'd say ask you know, for accountability from a friend. But it's on you to be able to actually set yourself up and understand the animal that you're working with. If you right. know that typically I get lazy at these times, then don't schedule something that you need to set all of your time and effort and energy into at that point. It just doesn't make any sense. But early in the morning and at the end of the day, those are two times when for the most part, there's nothing else going on. Your job is to either get up and get into the day or start to shut down and close down for the day. So to recap those, I'm going to say journaling for three minutes, just gratitudes, things I'm grateful for. Grateful I woke up and it was really nice. Grateful I woke up and had the blanket on. Grateful I woke up and the pillow wasn't on the ground because I hate that. You know, whatever those things are. Yeah. And then a three-minute meditation. There are simple meditations that you can find, tons of different apps that are out there. And the one that I use is Insight Timer. If they want to be a sponsor, they can. But, you know, just certain things that are just going to help you get along easily. Um, and not, not have you open IG or Facebook and just instantly go into the nonsense because then you're allowing yourself to go into this crazy flow that typically isn't going to lead you where you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. So we've unpacked a lot. We've gone through a lot so far. And again, I appreciate you being here. This is the first episode. Man, it's been a blast having you on here. I know we could just talk for hours and hours and hours. We got into some really great stuff today. And I want to be able to make sure that our audience is able to take some key things from this uh, episode and be able to walk away with that and start to work on some of it. So some of the things that we've touched on are obviously gratitude and journaling, uh, meditation, and overall balance. So seeking balance and continuing to work for that. So Tom, as, as you prep to move, as you prep to get married, a new job, do all these things. And as you continue on your path to self-mastery, what's one major piece of advice that you would give to the audience listening today? I would say just finding, you know, excitement 
you know, in, in all those different areas that you mentioned in, in, you know, in your life, find something that excites you about all those things. You know, if it's, if it's career, you know, find, you know, maybe jot down a goal, something you want to do. You know, if you're in sales and you're listening to this, maybe you want to hit your number by September, you know, jot it down, make it your goal and make it fun and exciting for yourself. Don't make it some, some task that you hate to do, like some chore. Um, I know that hundred percent works for me. And, and, you know, as far as the other areas of your life, go have fun and don't take things so seriously, just find the excitement in it, you know, and, and constantly learn, you know, whether it's you're running in a race or, you know, a, a, a marathon, whatever the case may be, just enjoy it, you know, have a goal, but yeah, absolutely enjoy it along the way. Well, Tom, our time has come to an end for the very first episode of the Mindset and Self Mastery Show. Gotta say, this has been a blast. I appreciate you being here. You're always a pleasure to speak with. And I'm so thankful that you were the first person to be on this podcast. We've talked about it for years, years and years, years and years and years. And I'm glad that we were able to actually pull the trigger and that you're the first one to be on here. So Tom, thank you for, uh, for being with us. Uh, what would you like to share with, uh, with the audience and where can the audience find you? Yeah, Nick, thanks again for having me on. I, I'm honored that you chose me to be the very first guest and I'm looking forward to uh, you know many, many more of these in the future. But yeah, if anyone wants to reach out, feel free to ping me with an email or you know, follow me on Instagram. Um, you know, uh, it, it was a blast. Again, thanks for having me on and uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to doing so many more with you in the future. Absolutely. Thanks, Tom. It was a pleasure. Have a great night. And uh, to the audience, thank you all. We'll see you next time. Wow, what a great first episode on the Mindset and Self Mastery Show. Isn't it wild how something as a child can affect you as an adult? Well, it kind of shouldn't be. It happens more than we think. If we don't deal with those traumatic events and things that happen as a child, it's going to deal with us. So I want to give a big shout out to Tom for being on the show and a huge shout out to you for listening today. Thank you for being with us. If you've enjoyed the show and the episode, please jump over to iTunes and subscribe, rate, and leave a five-star review. It is very much appreciated and it really helps. And if you really enjoyed the show today, go ahead and share it with your friends. We covered a pretty tough subject and got some great tips that really work for all of us. So check out the show notes for more info and contact info for Tom and check out other episodes on the mindset and self mastery show.com as well as our YouTube channel, the mindset self mastery show on YouTube. So with that, thank you very much for being here and remember your mindset matters and so do you.